Whales are difficult patients. They have no desire to be helped. They are unpredictable in terms of where they're going to show up and they require fairly substantial pieces of equipment to work with them, whether it be in life or in death. We sort of feed off the medical technology that has been developed. Part of my background is experimental radiology, and most of that training was done within medical institutions. Consequently, we use CT scans. We also use MRI. We use ultrasound. One of the reasons that I like working in two worlds, essentially, in the medical world but also in oceanography, is to take these essentially obscure, immense animals and to get inside their heads using various types of technologies as well as traditional techniques like dissection. So a necropsy is basically an animal autopsy. So it's the study of a dead animal to try and figure out why it died. When you do a necropsy, you actually find the pieces of an animal that tell the story of its life. So what did this animal eat? How did this animal move? What happened to this animal at the end of its life? Okay, take her up. The Marine Mammal Necropsy Lab we have is the best in the world. It's got overhead cranes that allow you to move heavy animals from transportation outside into the lab. It's got two very substantial downdraft tables which are hooked up to a negative pressure system so that the odors and any infectious diseases are scrubbed. In order to start the necropsy, we'd go through a systematic approach where we're looking for the condition of the animal basically from head to tail. We'll take teeth samples, we'll take skin samples, um, we'll open an animal up to find out how the organs look, what's happening to the internal structures, and then we'll go even a bit further. So is there anything almost microscopic, whether it's contaminants or, or pathogens? An interest of mine that I have personally are diseases in health of marine mammals. So we started looking for these bacteria and viruses and parasites, things we call pathogens, in marine mammals that can be transferred to humans or that humans can transfer to them. So it's a two-way street. Quite recently, we invited the world's experts in diving physiology to come here, both human diving and marine mammal diving, for a three-day discussion about the whole issue of how marine mammals manage gas under pressure. There's been a basic presumption that marine mammals do not suffer from decompression sickness in contrast to humans. We were able to acquire a portable veterinary ultrasound unit and we were able to look at the uh, presence or absence of gas in live stranded dolphins. The hyperbaric chamber was allowing us to take a carcass and put it in a water-filled chamber and then pressurize it so that we could then look at the gas in the lungs and the respiratory tract at different pressures. We were able to do some imaging of marine mammal cadavers under pressure in the CT scanner so that we could look at the behavior of gases in these dead animals post-mortem. The CT scanner allows you to get um, three-dimensional uh, x-ray images of the soft and hard tissues of a body and you can measure the volumes of the various organs as they change with pressure. It allows you to essentially virtually dissect without making a cut. The techniques that we use, CT scanning, MR scanning in particular, which let us look very quickly at an entire body, is one of the grandest tools for an anatomist that has ever been invented. Da Vinci would have gone nuts. It lets us take apart the animal and put it back together without ever having to go through dissection. And there are discoveries we've made in this lab and that have been made in others only because we hadn't disturbed the tissues. We use CT scans to understand what do these animals hear. One of the critical questions, say, for a Navy exercise doing sonar training would be what is the range at which it is safe to make what kind of noise, you know, how these animals hear, what they hear, how they respond to that. This is an, an animal that is designed through evolution to work underwater, in the dark, at depth, and a world that is the closest I'm going to get to another planet. We try to be an objective provider of basic understanding so that the applied decisions can be made appropriately. 
we can generate new information about a whole variety of different marine mammal disciplines that can have pertinence to ongoing debates about marine mammal conservation and their interface with important human activities, whether it be shipping industries or fishing industries or national defense.